So these are things, little notes I get throughout the day that I text myself or, or scribble down. And one is, this is my thought about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I just put, eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil caused them to know that good and evil exists. Not all the knowledge pertaining to good and evil. So in other words, Adam and Eve were living in paradise. They were living in the perfect environment, free of any negativity. They didn't even know, they did not even know that evil existed. And to a certain extent, they didn't know that good existed. Because to know that good exists, you have to have something to compare it to, namely evil. So they just lived. They were alive in this place that from the outside, you and I can look back at and say, that was good. God said it was good. The tree, what it did was, it brought an awareness to their minds that there is such a thing as good and evil. So now they were aware of evil, but why? Because they had, they had been good up to that point. Now they found out what good was. They found out what good is, and they found out what evil is. Good is trusting God. Evil is not trusting God. It wasn't that they learned about the law. I know some people actually believe that. It wasn't that they learned all the details of good and evil. It was they learned about the concept of good and evil. They didn't even know what the concept of good and evil was. And then their eyes were open and they saw that they were naked and they ran and hid themselves. Okay, that's one shorty. Another one. Does God obey the Ten Commandments? And since He dwells in us, why should we be consumed with them? This is something I just throw out there for you to ask yourself and dwell on and talk to Him and pray. Seriously, if you believe that obeying the law, or maybe you know better, quote-unquote, but you still wonder sometimes. I've had that where I, I really got a concept down, but I still wonder sometimes, like, really? He doesn't want me to obey? And that's not one of them for me. I, I totally get that. I totally get how we are far more obedient when we don't consume ourselves with being obedient. I understand that. But if that's still hanging on to you, just ask yourself that question. Does God need to obey the Ten? And if you believe that He dwells within you, in other words, you and Him are living together, you're living guided by His Spirit, does He need to obey the Ten Commandments? Because you're doing things together. Is that what He really needs to do? I think it answers itself, but it's something to think about. When we look at, this is the next thought, third thought, when we look at tithing and things like that in the worldly church, it's my words, I believe the church is worldly, and all these suggestions and recommendations and you betters and if you don't you're going to get it and all this stuff for contributions to the kingdom supposedly you're giving your money to God all these claims they make Paul said and you can look this up yourself in 1 Corinthians 9 16 through 18 that teaching the gospel is its own reward That is true, because we live in a spiritual realm in the New Covenant. It's not that we don't need to eat and all that, but we trust God. So, if teaching the gospel is its own reward, then what business does anyone have asking you to give them money? I'm not saying don't give people money. If you, if you, if you believe in their ministry, that's fine, give them money. But not out of the concept of you owe it in any way, shape, or form. Because they are already getting rewarded according to the Word of God. If they are allowed... And let's face it, everything is by the grace of God. If they are allowed to teach the gospel, they are already being rewarded. Ask your leaders about that. When they ask you for money, ask them, do they feel like they're rewarded? And if all of us stopped giving you money, would you still be happy and fine and just go on without a building and a, and a nice car and a nice house and all the, the stuff that you have because of us? Would you still do it? Just something to think about. Oh, here's a quick one. I won't expound on this much. Just a funny little question I came up with. Because we used to sing a song, Our God is More Than Enough. I used to love that song. I used to jump and shout and sweat and all these crazy things. If God is more than enough, why do we ask for his stuff? And this is the thing that I just found to be true. God is the one thing, I put in quote marks, the one thing we can yearn for or wish for and receive. Guaranteed. It's guaranteed. I mean, you can yearn for gold or wish for gold or this relationship or that item or whatever and then go out and try to get it. But God is the one thing in the universe and existence in the world, outside of the world, 
that you can actually yearn for with all your heart and you are guaranteed to get your God. It has to be an honest heart on his terms, not yours. Not demanding he proves anything to you, but if you believe and seek with your heart, God, he will be found. And lastly, the phrase or something to the effect so of saying, I'm too messed up for God, is a pride statement. I won't explain that too much because that's, again, I said I want to keep this short for you to think about. But I hear people say this all the time. And it used to always bother me. Even when I was in the building, when I was trying to get people to go where I thought they needed to be, I thought they needed to be in this building. I had a general concept, which was I thought they needed God, and people do need God. I just happened to think that God was in that building. I've since learned that that's not true, but the root of that is true. We all need God. We need our Creator. We need a relationship with the one who made us. That is the ultimate purpose of life is to know the one who made you and the one that hopefully you will be with for all eternity but to say that no you know now i wouldn't say a building but to say no i i'm not going to seek god because i'm just too messed up that's a statement of pride that's all it is it's a prideful statement because to assume that your god can't reach you because you're messed up that's pretty absurd and i think all of us know deep down that that's absurd if you're too messed up for God, then he's not much of a God. No one's too messed up for God. Anyone can call out to God and know him. But we just don't want to. And that's okay. Be, be honest about it. I didn't want to. I didn't want to nine-tenths of my life. I didn't want to. I was scared of God. Now I know him. Not because I'm a better person, but because I decided that I would really want to know him. Now I really want to find out what that's like. I really wanted to find out what it's like to be touched by God. So I said to let go of certain parts of me, including my pride. And now I know him, and now it's wonderful. In Jesus' name, amen.